Hey, beautiful. Hi. I saw Twilight. There was one specific scene where Jacob, Taylor Lautner, pulled up like kind of by Bella's house. He had his shirt off. And the way like she clinged onto him, went into his arms. I was like, that's exactly what I want. I need that body. I make you nervous. I swore to myself that I would get abs that summer. I know I did get them. <laughs> Diego Mercado's 23 and lives in the Bronx. I can sense how I make you feel. After that pivotal Twilight screening, Diego signed up for his first gym at 15. A year later, he leveled up to Star Fitness. That's a bodybuilder's gym. When I first started working at Star Fitness, oh my God, it was like going from hero to zero. I was like, holy freaking crap, do I even belong here? After spending, I wanna say maybe like six months to a year at Star Fitness, I was very disappointed with my progress. So from the research I had done, I learned that the most significant thing that impacted muscle mass was testosterone. But I was like, you know what? Like, let me just, let me go get my testosterone levels checked. When I was 17 years old, and I found out that at that time, I had a testosterone of like a 40 plus year old man. The doctor did offer to give me like testosterone replacement therapy, offered to help me out, but I figured that I would instead take it in my own hands. I felt like I knew enough. That's when Diego says he started using anabolic steroids, both the injectable and oral kinds. The first time I got them, I was 18. It was extremely scary in the beginning, but I don't know, I felt like Superman. It was like literally, every time I walked into the gym, I could lift heavier weight. Like it would sometimes be to the point where just grabbing and holding the dumbbells themselves would like pump my forearms up. I was gaining like one to three pounds every single week. And like I was lean, I was like losing fat and building muscle at the same time. This is what you have to do, like this. The most common reasons for people to seek out steroid use are almost exclusively appearance-based. Dr. Tom Hildebrand's a psychiatry professor at Mount Sinai and runs the Eating and Weight Disorders program. Steroids have been around since World War I. And they were used primarily for performance. And then late 70s, early 80s, you saw an explosion of popularity. Arnold Schwarzenegger came out as Mr. Olympia and moved from kind of this tiny bodybuilding subculture into completely mainstream popularity. Steroids are taken uh, eight or nine, ten weeks before a competition. It's not a healthy thing to do, but uh, it, it's been used. Did you take them? I, take them? I took them, yeah, up until the competition. There was this clear information out there that to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you have to use anabolic steroids. And so we moved from that hyper-masculine Arnold Schwarzenegger-like look to a whole bunch of different ones, from underwear models like Marky Mark to even runway models. You could really kind of create any type of body that you desired. Twilight was what kicked off the incentive to want to build an extremely aesthetic, lean, well-rounded physique. After that, I guess I would say things like Marvel, like seeing Captain America, when that guy comes out of that machine and he's like jacked as hell, you're like, yo. Social media has had a massive impact on my fitness pursuits in general. You see like the most jacked people on the planet. You see the Zac Efron's, you see the Marvel characters. And experts say social media's just made it easier for anyone to purchase anabolic steroids. So for, you know, a couple hundred dollars, maybe a thousand dollars, you can have 10 or 15 pounds more muscle. If you think about what plastic surgery costs as a comparative, it's a no-brainer, right? It was an expensive vice. The first year, nothing bad happened. Like I was only getting significantly stronger. I was gaining muscle. Like I, I felt good. My confidence skyrocketed through the roof, like better than it had ever been. My relationships improved. Everything did. I thought I was like, damn, bro. Like if Jacob were to stand next to me, I'd make him <laughs> look like crap. But that changed one night in July, 2019, when Diego went out with his friends after work. This is the result of trend and cardio. Maybe nine months to a year into it, I would wake up and like my bed would be in like a pool of sweat from the night sweats and then minor acne. 
I was experiencing some side effects that I had already had, like the heating up, just little stuff. Stuff that didn't really bother me. And I was like, okay, I'm used to this by now. And when I was at the bar, I knew that I really wasn't supposed to be drinking because of the excess strain that it would have on my liver. I was like, screw it. And I had the drink or two, but I very distinctly remember my body was heating up again, but it was different to how it was in the past. I was like, yo, this is way too much. Like I was getting a massive migraine. Things were like shaky for me. I was like, yo, this is not what I'm normally used to experiencing side effects wise. I'm like, some shit is horribly wrong. I need to go. When I got home that night, I was super sweaty. Kind of ish halfway made it through the night. Woke up uh, in the morning, could like barely move. I was like, yo, I need to get to the hospital immediately. They ran through the several blood tests and was like, yo, this is what's wrong with you. Your hemoglobin's through the roof. As a result of taking steroids, your red blood cell count increases, which means more blood flow, so more pressure on your arteries and important organs like your heart, liver, all that good stuff. So that was serious. I thought that would definitely encourage me to never use it again. But um, yeah, I don't know. I guess like, it, cause it does something to you mentally. You know, it makes you feel like you're invincible. I never committed myself to a full cycle cause I think there was like that subconscious fear that was lingering in the back of my head. If you commit to this, you're gonna commit to the end of your life. <laughs> so I messed with it for a few months after, but I would say no more than a year and a half after that was, it was cut off completely. It's going from Superman to Clark Kent. This looks like a job for Superman. Mentally, what it does to you, oh my God, I could write an entire book about it. Cause it like springs you into a depression, anxiety, like loss of like meaning for life. So what was killing me is no matter how much I was hitting the gym or like how diligently I was trying to track my food or whatever it was, I was not making progress anymore. I was losing muscle mass. It eats away like at my ability to interact with other people. My ability to have confidence, to have conversations, to maintain relationships, everything. Do I believe steroids are being used by Major League Baseball players? Yes. I have never used steroids, period. Sue two. Asking me or any other player to answer questions about who took steroids in front of television cameras will not solve the problem. Experts say the media coverage and stigma around steroids, you know, that it's cheating, it's dishonorable. Well, it's pushed the whole industry underground, which means less research and less support for people trying to quit. What our kids are getting was designed at best for use in horses and pigs and cattle. Taylor's knowledge of anabolic steroids prior to his uses was probably slim to none. Don's brother, Taylor, turned to steroids when he was encouraged to put on muscle mass for the high school baseball team in 2003. Not only was Taylor getting the acne and the puffy cheeks and, and that sort of thing, but Taylor was experiencing uh, emotional outbursts. Uh, Taylor became very angry and, you know, just within the flip of a switch, he would become depressed. After seeing his psychiatrist, the recommendation from the doctor was to quit cold turkey. So, uh, you know, this throws the body obviously into a big hormone imbalance, which can lead to depression. He took his life just after his 17th birthday. If there were more information on anabolic steroids that my brother would have gotten, would he be here today? And the answer, I believe, is yes. As a result of doing steroids, I need testosterone replacement therapy, but it's uncertain, and this has always been my biggest fear, of whether or not I would need that for the rest of my life. I don't know yet. Since quitting steroids, Diego's finally found a doctor who can help get his hormone levels back to normal. I still don't have a, an exact answer of what I'm gonna need. Just a better, clearer picture and a pathway to like, okay, you're getting better. I'm nowhere near as depressed as I used to be. I'm not depressed. Like I don't have the anxiety that I did. Nowadays, Diego's channeled his passion for fitness in a different way, blogging for men's health and working at a physical therapy rehab center. My relationship to fitness has went from being obsessive about the way that I look and see myself to a much healthier one that's focused on health and feeling good. Physical health, mental health, emotional health, spiritual health, all that good stuff. I don't think I would ever use steroids again. I don't think any of that was worth it. It was not worth the depression, the anxiety, the lacklusterness I felt in life, loss of meaning, confusion, everything all piled into one. It, it wasn't worth it at all.